Today I'm going to show you on how to connect your VTOs to your VTHs using building configuration from config tool that you will be find in the DAO toolbox. Now it's very important whenever you're setting up this equipment that you do your planning beforehand. Very different to cameras, whenever you actually log into the camera, you can actually see where a camera is. Well, of course, in this case here, you can't see where VTH has been deployed and installed because it doesn't have a camera. So, of course, when you're configuring this equipment, and of course, you know full too well that, of course, it's not going to create its own topology, then, of course, you have to, in fact, actually do your planning because the moment that the VTH is taken away from you and taken to a location to install, how would you ever know where it is? So of course in this case here, I'm gonna show you how to plan for your installation and then I'm gonna show you how to carry it out. Okay, so now let's set up these devices. So into DAO toolbox and then config tool. Okay, you will see that I've got a total of four devices and everything is uninitialized. Now I can initialize two of the products at the same time, providing that the product category is the same. So for these VTHs, for example, I can initialize these. So what I do is I turn these on, initialize, and I'm gonna make it really simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to get that right so I can turn email address off at the moment. Next. Select my language, English, finish, and then finish. Okay, so the VTHs are already done. Right, now, the first test that we do here today is we are gonna configure the little one over there, which of course, obviously, is the VTO 2202F, okay? Right, so we're going to this one here, initialize, and I'm gonna make it, once again, very simple, admin123, admin123. Turn the email address off, next, finish, okay? Right, so we've got the VTHs initialized and we've got the VTO initialized, okay? Now, whenever I was mentioning earlier on about planning, then of course, before I do anything else, I'm gonna take an export of this information so then that way I can use it later on whenever I return to site or whenever I complete my installation. So, I'm gonna select on all of them then I'm going to take out the VTO that is uninitialized because we're not doing that yet. And then I'm going to click on export. I'm going to save that to my desktop and we're just going to call it VTO config. And you can see in the, in the background there on the actual desktop, there is now actually a Excel file. Okay, right, let's double click. Okay, nicely done. Right, let's zoom in a bit here. Okay, so, I'm gonna sort everything. Right, okay, so, all of the information is there. We've got our port numbers, we've got our IP address numbers. I'm gonna be focusing on this one here, so I'm gonna make that bold. And then in column M, I'm gonna make it really simple. I'm gonna put in location, okay? So then, of course, I'm gonna know later on where this equipment has been delivered to. We have had faults where people have put two VTHs into individual apartments for a multi-story building, and then, of course, when they've pressed on apartment three, it's actually rang the first VTH in apartment three and the extension VTH in apartment five. That must mean that somebody got the topology plan incorrect and whenever they were putting the actual devices in the building, they were, must have made a mistake rather through IP or of course obviously just installing the wrong one in the wrong location, okay? So in this case here, I'm just gonna put in studio so I know exactly where my devices are, okay? So that's my planning side of things done. Right, now into this. Okay, I'm going to leave that there so I can see it in the background. Right, down to building configuration. Let's do an update. As you can see, I have one VTO and two VTHs. Now, this is where we start to have to put everything together. So click on global parameters first. Change it from DSS Express, which is of course obviously default to VTO. That means I'm going to make the VTO responsible for maintaining the communication and including SIP, okay? Had I, of course, obviously had a computer with DSS, then I would have selected DSS. At the moment, I'm gonna make that VTO do everything. 
Okay then, now I need to change the IP address to the actual VTO, so you can see in the background there, that's going to be 192.168.192.168.0.0.0. Okay. The username for the VTO was admin123. Password for the VTH was 123456. Okay. So my global parameters are now set up. Now this is the really easy part. Whenever I click on add node, then of course it's literally telling me how I'm going to plan this out. So let me just do an example first. So I'm always going to need a main VTO. I could of course obviously have a secondary VTO. But let me just show you. If I did, let's say, three floors, and then I did two apartments per floor, and two VTHs per apartment. If I actually did that, press on OK, it would then look like this. Can you see? Floor one, room one, host and extension. Third floor, room one, host and extension. Okay, so you can actually see your actual topology plan before you actually do, um, dish it out. Right, so I'm going to delete that because that's not going to be correct for this solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one floor, one apartment, two VTHs. Okay, that looks accurate. Okay, so now I've got the VTO, one main VTO on the first floor, in the first room, and of course I've got two devices. Okay, now all you have to do is associate from left to right. So, on the VTO, click on VTO and then main VTO, then click on associate, you'll see that it pulls a serial number over, then a VTH to host, associate, and the remaining VTH to extension, associate. Okay. Now my plan is set. Once I'm ready, I'm going to click on the association list. I'm going to select all of my products in my plan. And then whenever I press on config in the top right hand corner here, everything that I put into the global parameters, that was this section here earlier on, and everything that I put into the add node is now going to be pushed to the product. So I'll go into association list. Everything is ready. Press on config. That's going to send it out. Three green ticks means we're all successful. One, two, three. And now everything will restart. Whenever all of these devices come back online, I will make one single modification to the VTO. And then, of course, once it's done, then the phones will ring. Now, whenever I press on config tool, that's going to send it all out to these devices. And then, of course, all of these devices will restart. After I make a final modification to the VTO for the calling room number, whenever I press that button, both of these devices will ring simultaneously. As we can see, the devices have restarted and in the top left hand corner of the VTH, I can see that it has room 101 applied to the VTH. It doesn't have to be that number, it could just be one if we want it. I will show you how to do that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to make that final modification from VTO to VTH. So. 101 it says. So I'm just going to go into device configuration, double click on my VTO, put in my details, admin, admin 123, press OK, and there it is there. Call room. Okay, all I'm going to do is change the 9901 to 101, which matches these VTHs. When I press on save, the device will restart, and then of course, once it's restarted, I'm going to be able to press that button and these two uh, VTHs will start ringing. Okay, the device has now restarted, and of course this device has been pre-programmed for room 101, and the VTHs are waiting for that. So a single press. Calling now. Please wait a moment. Both VTHs ring, very, very simple. Okay, so as you saw, setting up the actual VTO was very, very simple. So that was our villa unit that we set up. Now we're going to set up an apartment model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig the game this time, and with a special configuration, I'm going to make it so then that way I will dial one set of digits, and it will call VTH1. Then I will call another set of digits, and of course that will call VTH2. So then I'm going to replicate a two-apartment scenario, okay? Right, so just as before, we have four defaulted devices, so let's get them back online. So this time I'm going to go for the VTO4202. Let's initialize. Admin123, let's just keep it simple. 
advent123, email address to off, activated. Then I can initialize my two VTHs. Once again, I can still do them at exactly the same time because they're the same product category. Initialize, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, email address off. Next, language, English. Finish, okay, done, right? That means a few devices might restart. Let's just see. Okay, so now the devices are back online. So we've got our VTL here, and of course this time the number is going to be at 5.31, and of course both VTHs have now rebooted. Right, let's go off to the building configuration. So 5.31, I need to remember that. So back into building configuration, let's click on those global parameters again. So of course it's v VTO, yep, and then of course it's going to be 5.31, okay? This is going to be admin123, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, right, that's that done. Press OK. This time when we build the node, then of course it's going to be based on two apartments, one VTH per apartment, one floor. Okay, so let's go. So add node. Right, so one VTO, definitely. One floor. Two apartments. One VTH per apartment. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So let's just do the association just like we did for the villa unit. So associate the VTO, the VTH, and the VTH. Okay, nicely done. Right, association list. Click on all associated devices. And then once again, whenever I press on configuration, Whenever I press on the configuration button, once again, it's going to send all of the configuration details to all of the devices. They will reboot, and then, of course, the devices will become online, allowing us to get ready for testing. Okay, three green ticks, and all is good. Perfect. Okay, now everything will reboot. Okay, then, so let's configure the accessory options. So I'm going to go into VTO and I'm going to click on web. Okay, let's get logged in. Admin. Okay, so let's go over to the local settings. And then this is that section where you can decide your faceplate layout. So as you may know, we've got these single buttons, you've got multiple fixed buttons, RFID readers, uh, LED display. And display so I suppose my one looks like this and then of course that was that's my current unit if I did have any of these other accessories then let's say this one here for example two button now if I wanted to then of course then whenever I click into the actual white area there you can actually see my room numbers 101 save 102 save so of course those two fixed buttons, had I had these two fixed buttons, they will immediately dial those VTHs when pressed. So of course, the faceplate layout is very easy to configure. The configuration has been sent to devices and all three devices have now restarted. And as you can see now, if I go to this panel here. One, zero, one, calling now. Please wait a moment. Okay, perfect. Okay, and because I set up a different room, then of course now I can go to... One, zero, two, calling now. Please wait a moment. Excellent. The line is busy now. Perfect. So as you can see, the configuration tool made that very, very simple for me to set up this apartment model for two independent VTHs. Okay. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell. All the best.